class. This is kind of an unusual format for me, but I'm going to attempt to at least get you started using these videos and also to use my PowerPoint, which you see in D2L, and the textbook. So, first of all, you want to understand the difference between anatomy, which has to do with, with structure, and physiology, which has to do with function. And this course is tied together with both. The function came first, and then an anatomical structure was developed to accommodate that, such as the reverse megaphone or the ear. There are many ways to study anatomy, and I want you to look at each one. Gross anatomy means you use your naked eye to observe it. Then we have topical anatomy under gross anatomy, which has to do just looking at surface anatomy. Just like if you went to the doctor, we only just glance at you without touching you first. I want you to be able to study the various topical anatomical structures so you can do that on your own. Do both the back and the front. The back and the front. Then you want to look at gross anatomy under what we call the systemic approach, which has to do with systems that you'll learn later. We have 11 systems in the body, like the cardiovascular system and so forth. And then also look at the regional approach, which has to do like we did in a medical school where you cut the head first and then you'll go to the thorax and so forth. So there are two approaches to approach gross anatomy. Microscopic anatomy, you need a microscope. And one of the forms of microscopic anatomy is histology, which is a study of tissues. So study what a tissue is as you study on your own through this. There are four types of tissues, epithelial, connective, nerve, and muscle. And we slice this, which you'll see when we do get back face to face, into little sections to look at under a microscope side. Then cytology is the study of cells. We estimate that we have about, some will say we have around 210 different cell types in the body. And if we take the average uh, standard human who's about five foot eight, five foot nine, we say there's close to a hundred trillion cells, but two hundred and ten different cell types, which are subsumed into four different tissue types. These are examples of some of the cell types that you have. Developmental anatomy involves what we call from the start to, to death, basically, but it involves the pre-embryonic period, which some will say is the first 16 days, then the embryo, which is the first eight weeks, human embryo, first eight weeks in utero inside the mother's womb, and then the fetal period. Fetal period, basically, in the human is from nine weeks all the way to the time that the person is delivered. These are... The, these are milestones, but nothing to really, to, nothing to really note about that. That's something I normally do in a face-to-face -face talk about. Pathology is the study of abnormal uh, anatomy, and then you have radiologic anatomy, which is a study of anatomy without you having to physically touch the person, and and there are many different radiological methods. So when it comes to the study of physiology, there's not a whole lot of different ways to study physiology. Most physiology is studied on the organ system approach, renal, cardiovascular, digestive. And as I said, path pathophysiology, just like pathology was the abnormal st study of anatomy, pathophysiology is the abnormal study of function. Then we have what we call cell phys, which is looking at the physiology of the cell, which, and we'll talk about the cell in chapter three. We have designed from a bottom-up approach as far as the human body. 
of what we call levels of hierarchy or levels of structural organization. The first level being the chemical level. And the book is actually set up in that basis. So the first level being the chemical level. And then the next one is take a bunch of chemicals, various chemicals, and make your cell. And then cells come together and make tissues. Tissues are a group of cells. And then different tissues. Remember, there were four different tissue types. Two or more different tissue types together makes an organ. And then these organs are put together in a meticulous pattern to make an organ system. And then you put all of those together to make the organism. So this is what you're, what you're looking at there. Chemical levels, certain chemicals go together. Chemical we'll talk about in chapter 2. And then cell chapter 3. And then tissue chapter 4. And so it proceeds on from there. I'm not going to, what a population basically is, is a group of organisms of the same species in an area. So let's say we're out in Kingwood, then all the all the homo, homo sapiens in that area, humans, would be a population. Then if we took all of the living populations, that would be the butterflies, the horses and everything, that's what we call a biological community. And then if we take everything there, both the living and non-living, that's what we call an ecosystem. Here are some of the organ systems that you have that you can look through. The integumentary system, which includes the skin. It's not just the skin. The skeletal system. The muscular system the nervous system, the endocrine system, the cardiovascular system, the lymphatic system. Cardiovascular, lymphatic, we'll discuss in A and P2 when you take that. The respiratory system, A and P2, digestive system, urinary system, digestive and urinary in A and P2, reproductive in A and P2. The, when it comes to life, the whole, W-H-O-L-E, is greater than the sum of the parts. So it's not like just putting stuff together. It's a, it's a pattern to put this together, which makes the whole greater than the sum of the parts. So it's kind of like, instead of in math, 1 plus 1 equals 2, in life, 1 plus 1 might equal 3, 4, 5 because of the interrelationship that things are put together. So the term is the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So everything is put together in this pattern here in which to interrelate everything. Here are some of the life processes that I want you to study. One life process being metabolism, which is the sum total of all chemical process in the body. Now, chemical processes, chemicals can either be put together or broken down. So in, the, in, the, in biochemistry, when you put chemicals together, a, which we call a building process, that's what we call anabolism. So like anabolic steroids, you chemically working to make your muscles get bigger would be an anabolic process. Breaking stuff down is called a catabolic process. So the two, the interchanges between things being built and things being broken down, anabolism and catabolism. Other life processes are ingestion. Ingestion would be you taking in food and water. When you take it in, then you've got to, in order to be able to use it, you have to digest it. And what you can see here, digestion is breaking down food into simpler forms. There are two ways to do a digestion. One is mechanical where you chew stuff up, or you churn it in the stomach, and the other is chemical, where you use enzymes to break these things down into smaller. Now, the chemical, then, would be when you break it down again, we're back to catabolism. And then as it passes down from the stomach to the small intestine, you absorb some of your food. 
Respiration, which you would think of as breathing, really is a process to generate energy by breaking things down. You need oxygen to do that. And then excretion is elimination of waste. Secretion. So let's go from excretion here, elimination of waste, to secretion. Secretion is when you put useful products out from a cell, like putting a hormone or something of that secreted from a cell. Differentiation. You started out with sperm, meat, and egg. One cell. All of them were just alike. Then you started doing mitosis, which we'll study in chapter 3. And after that occurred, you made a bunch of cells. But they all still are just alike. So in order to get those 210 different cell types, somewhere down the road, the cells had to start to specialize. And that process is called differentiation. Another life process is called excitability. Excitability, some books call it responsiveness or irritability, is the ability to sense an external stimuli. Then we have con conductivity, just like with nerve and muscle, they can conduct an impulse, like going along an electric wire. Contractility, which you know would be in muscle, is to shorten against a force. Assimilation is a situation where when you eat, let's say, a steak from a cow, that steak the, must be broken down and the proteins in the steak must be broken down in order to reassemble them in you into proteins of your type. So assimilation is to make like, to take something that's not like you, break it down chemical, and then make it like you. Growth is a situation that life does. There are two ways to grow. One way is to increase the number of cells, which we call hyperplasia. That's what we mainly do most of. And the other is to increase the size of cells. Like when you exercise after a certain age, when your muscles get bigger, it's because of hypertrophy, an increase in the size of the cell. And then, of course, reproduction is when you make a new entity. The needs of the organism, I want you to study, would be nutrients. You obviously need that. You need oxygen. Oxygen, again, is used in respiration to, to get your energy. You need water, and we'll talk about in Chapter 2 the importance of water. Normal body temperature. The, the, the heat drives chemical reactions. That's the key to keep in mind heat drives chemical reactions. And then we need pressure. The main thing about pressure is to take stuff inside and out of cells and inside and out of vessels. Homeostasis is a situation to maintain a normal and constant internal environment in the face of a changing external environment. It was coined by a gentleman named Walter B. Cannon. I'm going to discuss homeostasis in another video. Thank you.